first recommendation to make your coding simpler and friendlier is create a MISC file on your computer for miscellaneous pieces of code. It's very convenient when you have some witty solution, just put it there. Maybe you will reuse it. For example, here I, I keep codes how to install uh, TinyTech. I have codes about the colors I liked and I selected, etc. So have a file where you plug all the great things you found and maybe you will reuse it. The next step is to set some global options for RStudio. So let's go to Tools, Global Options. First thing I recommend everyone is to uncheck the Restore R data. This is the option which makes R to save R data and restore R data. So basically your environment each time you restart RStudio. It's inconvenient and it also takes space and it also doesn't help you coding. A good practice for coding is that you write everything from script and you can totally reproduce your environment. If you are loading something from the last session, from yesterday, or maybe you used R a week ago, or maybe months, you don't really need that. So uncheck this. Also uncheck save history. Here I use the uh, safe workspace on exit ask just for convenience because if I accidentally click close it will ask me do you want to save it. I always say no but I always keep it on here. And let's go to completion settings sorry to diagnostics and here I also recommend to check all these things because R will give you warnings if for example you define a variable and never used it or if you are using a variable which was never defined Actually, I found some bugs in my code after I checked all these settings. Let's go to Swive. I'm using the Neat R package, so in this drop down menu, please choose Neat R, and you should have a, some version of LaTeX. Otherwise, you will have a narrow message here. For Windows users, I also recommend to install Sumatra PDF Viewer. Okay, so these are the settings. Let's create our first project. So let's go in the top right corner, project, new project. We will start a new directory, so a new folder, new project again. For research, I recommend, especially to students, if you have quite separate topics for your dissertation, for example, you can create a project for each chapter. For example, one chapter is an analysis of tilefish, another is an analysis of dolphins. Please don't put any special characters. I recommend you don't ever use spaces in the paths, in the names of the folders. And then just click create project. It will switch to that project. Now you see that on the top right, the project is selected. We have the files menu. In the folder we've just created, Dolphins, we have the system file, our project, that saves information about this project, about the settings. I usually create the following folders. Code. Let's create new folder, data. Again, you can put underscore or use capital letter. I don't like capital letters because it's an additional thing to tap. I actually just put one word, data raw and data derived. I start with data so they're alphabetically ordered and close to each other. In raw data, we will place files that we obtain from sampling or you downloaded it from somewhere. So those are files that we will not modify. In data derived, we will be putting some derivatives of our work, something that we calculated and wanted to save or share with colleagues, some summaries, etc. 
then you can create a folder uh, figures we will be producing figures for publications please put s at the end because in some cases r creates automatically a folder called figure and i just don't want you to have two folders of the same names so in general now we have a project dolphins here should be all your stuff about dolphins for example you can create a folder for for example for an SF proposal you can create a folder I, I put months uh, for conferences so everything can go in this folder and you will have code data row data derived figures so it's convenient when you will be making a presentation you can actually make presentations in R but for example you're making a presentation in PowerPoint you just go to folder figures and you will locate there some figures that you produced so everything will be shared within the project also when you are creating different versions of files please use the format of year year month day this is the format that R uses so it's very convenient and also so if we have several files that have the same name except different dates if you order alphabetically it will be also ordered chronologically which is very convenient well, let's create our first file in this project you can do file new file script or control shift n and we'll create our first script we will save it to the folder code and we can name it for example this will be file for us to uh, load the data so I'll just type load we can see that it appeared here you probably already have data for your research so let's just load it from the internet data come from a wonderful book on sampling by Stephen Thompson execute this line we have a new data frame of weather variables run head of this data frame we see that the variables are actually unnamed we can create names I read the book and this is what the author said were the variables but basically we can have this tiny modification to the data we loaded here I'm using camel format if I try again head weather now the variables are all named all good and we can save this data for future use why I recommend saving it even if it's available on the internet of course there could be a chance that they will be not available tomorrow so let's save them for us there is a function write csv and then we choose the object that we are saving whether and then the fun part we put the file name file equals so we'll start from we already assume that we are in the folder dolphins and this is our file structure so we are in this folder dolphins and then we need to put the data file into the folder data row you can use a tilde or dot to say that you are in this folder then put slash start typing data it will give you with tab you will have a hint which one to use so we'll choose data row and then create a name say weather dot csv and another convenient option because here the row names are meaningless we can say that row names equals false so they we don't write them to the csv execute this line 
we go to data row this is our file notice that I can actually copy paste this whole code for you and you will be able to reproduce it because you will be just operating with the same structure of the folders and again it's very convenient if you are copying the whole folder to a different computer you can run the code let's create a new file here control shift n this will be our script to edit the code usually we have lots of things to do to clean up the data and I will do very simple today again it's just about how to organize files on your computer not how to do fancy data manipulations I'll call this file process so now we will be processing our data for example cleaning calculating new variables summarizing now we can load our data raw data we don't need to go to the internet again we can start with the remove list ls to clean the environment and then read the data i like to use some generic name for data for example if it's the whole data it's capital d if i'm subsampling it will be lowercase d in my codes usually and also it's very easy to replace inputs later on so now we are trying to load something from our project read.csv we can again dot slash data row and then again tab and it will autofill the data when we execute it again control enter in our studio here we get our data now we will process it i suggest a very simple processing for example to convert units for snow because they were in centimeters let's create a new variable for snow which is in millimeters d snow in millimeters the same in centimeters multiplied by 10. so if we run summary d again we have new variable we've done processing so how to save data that we can easily reuse there are several convenient functions in R you can save the data using function save RDS save RDS saves data in R format it's not very good for archival saving but it's good if you just saving it now and then reloading it in a different file it also compresses the data pretty well here we are saving object D and because this is already data after processing we will put this file into the folder data derived and I can call it weather again and it will have an extension RDS so when we execute this line we can check that data derived now has this file and it's actually smaller so compression is better even than CSV sometimes I find useful to append the current date to the file names you can paste zero paste zero is a function to paste text strings we'll do paste zero we will put the file name weather so this is will, this will be our first string then we put comma then there is a function sys date comma and then in quotes we put the extension rds another option except save rds where we select object that we want to save is save.image for example we have a different object here lowercase d so now we have two objects and we can save them all together as an image so image means that we are saving the whole environment all objects in the environment and I'm just saving data derived start with prefix image to make sure that this is image and this file will have the extension rdata 
so extension is different when you use save.image how to load them for save RDS the pair function is read RDS and we can read to a different object basically like you are doing with read CSV read RDS and we can read this file with save image to load everything there is a function load and again you put the file name it will load all objects more strict version is if you are loading like this with RDS the danger of using save image and load is in matching names of objects in R if you had an object called D in your environment and then you load the image which also contains object with the same name it will be overwritten when you are using RDS you control the names of all objects sometimes you have a separate code to plot things especially if it's a fancy plot for publication we can create a new script and let's create a fancy plot for publication so if we create a new script and then we can use whatever functions you like for plotting since here we have time series for three months I'm going to use plotts and I will plot the temperature series second third and fourth columns so I'll just select columns from second to fourth this is my plot of course you, you can do fancier than that imagine now you want to save it for publication one way to save it is in vector format this is my favorite method for this we will start a new graphics device with a function Cairo PDF on the background it opens the connection to a file which file we will type name here we will put it into figures folder that we created and let's call it weather.pdf for example for identifiability I also put the prefix here something like fig or image so I will know that this is this PDF file is not about research on weather it's just a figure we can specify width 8 and 6 for example and height 6 notice here because we are using vector format basically these are just proportions you can think of, of them as inches but we don't need to specify anything else we don't need to specify resolution so Cairo PDF opens this connection to the file and then we will use the function dev off to close it so basically what we are doing start the file then we have the plotting code then device off close the connection so you need to run from here to the end to see the file so when I run this we'll get a message something like this RStudio graphics device 2 means it's not showing into these graphics it will put it into a file figures so here we have the fig weather you can open it with any PDF viewer I recommend that you find this file in your folders and open it with something like Sumatra PDF because Sumatra uh, allows you to update the file without closing it Sumatra PDF this is how my file looks like I'll put it together in one Sumatra PDF allows me to change the code for example I put different line width and run the code and see the results so we immediately can see the effect and this is how you can play around and create a really good graph for publication which is good because it's in vector format so we can zoom it scales without any raster effects there is also function PDF the difference is that Cairo PDF embeds fonts so sometimes when you read journal guidelines they say if figure is in PDF you need to embed fonts so Cairo PDF does that PDF function does not so it's not 
good for publications. If the journal is stubborn and you need to produce a figure in JPEG, you can just change the code like this. You, you put JPEG, so we will be starting a JPEG device. So I'll put FigWeather JPEG. And in this case, this is a raster format. We'll need to put resolution from journal guidelines, for example, 300 dots per inch. And then we need to specify that our dimensions are also in inches. There is an argument called units and we put in for inches. And you, of course, you can find the help for all these functions. If you double click, select the function name and then press F1, you have all the help here. We can run this code and then in the files, we will have the figure. Again, it's very simple code. You can have as many lines here as you want. You can have comments, you can do whatever but start with starting a graphics device and then close it with device off. So for example, you, you have pre-processed the data, it could be long code, and then you need to provide a summary for your coworkers, uh, for your colleagues. Most of the data processing don't need to be visualized, but some analysis, for example, some regression, then some summaries of residuals, etc., you can put into a um, report file. So let's create our first report. File, new file, uh, R markdown. You can put a title, say weather report. Author. You will get a default file like this. So it already has examples for creating a document then we need to save it put it into the root directory of the project weather report and then please hit neat this is just default it should work we haven't changed anything we just named and put the file so you should be able to generate the report don't need to look for a way to save or print it. It's already saved as HTML on your computer. If you were generating a PDF file, it will be a PDF file already there. Here we have the following structure. We have the title options, the chunks of our code, which are set up like this with triple quotes. And then here we say R, so that R Studio understands that this is our code. The rest is similar to LaTeX. We have sections and titles starting with these signs. You can actually open the outline of the document here. Actually, the section title will be with one. Production. This will be section, this will be subsection, etc. To create a new chunk, of R code to put some R code here. Press this green button R and then we can plug in here our code for example to load the data and run summary. So let's see if it will work. So it works, it loads the data. Data we, in this case I'm loading raw data but you can load for example the process data run summary then you can run regression analysis etc do plots if we do plot here if your data file changes you can just replace the input here and regenerate the whole report all summaries all plots and so on. So if you want to use R code in text, not to have it on a separate row, then you just do single quotes, then you say this is R, and then say sys date. This function which we already have 
used, it will output the current date. So here changed to R format. In chunks, you have the options to include the chunk or not. So if you include, it will be shown. If you don't, don't include, it will not appear in the output. There is an also an option to say echo, we can say to false, and it will change the behavior such that the code will not be shown, but the output will be. So the summary and plot are still there for your colleagues, but if they don't appreciate code, you can just hide it with echo equals false. There are many things to explore. I hope it's useful for you.